They come out on top, but today, oh, Whoa. big accident by Koroiser. Koroiser, little Marcos. Well, there it is, and it's right on the start finish straight, and this is going to have to be stopped. He's in a dangerous position here, I'm afraid. Right in the head. I hope everybody doesn't uh, uh, get into the dust here. They've all been waved onto the side. He's right in front of our commentary position. I'm just safety taking a look car. at it. Safety it will car. be a Had safety car. Where's the be. safety car? Has to be. The Surely. lights are on on the safety car. There's no point in waiting until the leader comes. He needs to get himself out there. There well, is so much damage. There is. Uh, and uh, stuff on lot. the start and finish well, the guys was, are slowing car, down we, dramatically as they should because as well. of it wow well that was a massive hit david i'm just going to see if we're going to spool back and have a replay of that and uh, still the, the safety door car is open he is okay the safety car sign is out the safety car is sitting still it needs to move the safety car needs to move to get the marshals allowed out and on to the circuit to see Coroiza. the door has opened the door is closed so we know car's okay we know he's moving inside that car but still the cars are coming round with the safety car boards out all the way around the circuit now. We can see all the flags waving. So there it is. Uh, but let me just tell you that some quality drivers have got it very, very wrong on the start-finish straight, not least Mika Hakkinen. We will see in a moment's time just how he lost it. Here it comes. So it gets wide, ah. gets dirty, and here goes the spin. Uh, just wrestling with it, trying to hold on, and gets the slingshot back off the rubber. Spins into traffic. Thankfully, nobody getting... Uh, uh, any kind of damage there and comes to a halt thank goodness but unfortunately uh, the safety car is out and you can understand why still haven't managed to clear him David no he was going around the outside of uh, one of the Ferraris and uh, that's what he was doing at the time I think he was actually trying to get clear and just got it a little bit too clear he was pushed wide on the Clark curve uh, by his own momentum and then got it dirty and as soon as he lost control he was onto the grass he was wrestling with it hit the wall spun round back onto the circuit and thankfully didn't get into any other vehicles well this is Luis Berma uh, Castro and uh, Cor Usa I'm just trying to see who is actually on board here David well as the um, changes have will have happened I'm pretty sure that uh, he's been in and be Cor Usa who's actually in the SDs they've been in so Cor Cor's in bo on board now this is Cor's car in actual fact he raced this car or one of the, he's got two of these cars. He Good raced them. There is a replay round the outside. Got onto the grass. See the speed that that car is travelling. Luckily, it was a bit of a glancing blow, and just spun him round and round and round. And uh, there he stopped on the uh, start and finish. Well, thank goodness as well. The rest of the field had a very good view of him, David, because uh, as they came uh, around uh, the corner, the Clark <laughs> curve, they had a great view of it and were able to just uh, get themselves into a safe right. position on the track. Everybody now knows that car's there because they've all been passed once. What I don't understand is the safety car. The first thing you do with a safety car is neutralise the race. Get everyone behind the safety car, slow it down so the marshals can get to the driver to sort it out. Safety car went out. The first thing it did was wave people past. Wrong. The safety car rules, I am sure, state it neutralizes the race first. Only then, after that, will the... Once the car, the, the offending car, this car we're looking at, once that's been attended to, only then will they let the other cars pass. Once it's been attended to and shifted, will they then let the other cars pass in order to get hold of the leader. Once the leader's got hold of, and uh, then the other people catch up the train, then they'll be able to do something about it. But there we can see from our uh, commentary booth, Coroys are stepping out of the car and walking away. He was fine. It was more just of a high-speed spin for him rather than a massive amount of damage. But nevertheless, that, when you watched it, was going on the screen there, was going very, very quickly on grass. David, um, that was, uh, that was uh, that potentially, that was very, very dangerous indeed. And I, I must admit, I can't understand what has happened to that safety car, why it took so much time. And they're bringing the field onto uh, the pit straight. And I'm just wondering, uh, well, it's clearly, the, the, clearly the reason is that the low loader here just can't quite get into position properly to actually remove the vehicle. We're having a look at it right now. The there is the owner of the car. He's out and he is safe. The reason he's looking so miserable is that uh, he has to pay the bills. <laughs> uh, more than likely, but um, I would hope that they'll take all the cars through the pit lane, back out the other side, yeah. and on to the start and finish. So that's that will exactly allow... What they're doing. That's exactly what they're doing. You can see them now in front of us, and that will allow the uh, rescue team to be able to, A, sweep up on the main straight, and B, recover the uh, stricken car that's sitting right in the middle of the straight. But I have to say, that safety car should have picked up 
the first car it came to. It took far too long it did. to leave the pit lane. And to be honest, David, we weren't aware of the condition of the driver either, and you cannot be aware fully of the condition of the driver. He might be telling you he's OK, and he doesn't know he's not OK. Uh, that was just a little bit slow uh, in terms of action there, and uh, surely there's going to be questions asked, not least for Mr David Leslie, who's going to take himself down there and ask why uh, it happened no. that way. I'll leave the uh, race director alone. He's... Uh, <laughs> much more qualified than I am. I just um, <laughs> try and read the uh, odd rule book I pick up here and there, basically. But, uh, yeah, you should neutralise the race first. Once that's done, then... Um well, I'll tell you what this does you. do, David. It gives us a sprint for home here, 10 laps remaining, and that's if they get it clear this time of by. I think they may even. They're just sorting out fluids as well. A lot of the oil dries going down as we speak just in front of us. And look at the front-end damage to that. That's... Uh, uh, that's going to be uh, uh, under the spanner for some time, let me tell you that much. Well, when they do get going again, we have got a sprint for home on our hands because they've made the stops. Well, another look at it here, uh, fighting for it, fighting for it, and this is the danger point right now. Thankfully, thankfully, he spun back into a gap in traffic. As David quite rightly said, why on earth wasn't the safety car? The lights were on, why wasn't it deployed more quickly? A rueful owner strolls back. Thankfully, he's OK. The car most certainly is not. And there we Ghost. see the uh, car being uh, rescued onto the back of the uh, truck.